big disasters that happened in the village? Yes, when I was a child. I remember we had a, um, an aeroplane, an aeroplane crash. It uh, had run out of fuel and it just missed the church and uh, it came down in a field very near where my dad was working. He ran over to it. He helped the pilot out of the plane, which saved his life. Do you remember when it happened? 1944. Did your dad meet the pilot again? Yes, he did. They uh, built a memorial in aid of that, right near the church. The pilot came over to Corston from America to open it. And my dad had had a stroke. He was uh, in a home. So we got him out and he met the pilot and my dad was then 90. Um, do you have any memories of during the war, any frightening stories that you remember? I went but come back home to live and my dad had made a dugout in the garden and we, as soon as there was a noise of a plane, we were hauled out of your bed and round into the garden and down this dugout. And I can remember my sister, she... You couldn't wake her up, you had to drag her asleep. <laughs> and we could hear all stones hitting the roofs, and that was a landminer dropped up to Woodrow, but they didn't go off. And then we had, what, two or three more around the village, didn't we? One at Eastgate, one down the Bilton Road in the field, but they missed, the, missed all the houses, of course. You went to Corston School? Yes, we went to Miss Tuttle. <laughs> I, I went to Mrs Tuttle and I wasn't, I think I just went into the next class, but I then was, Dad came home 1947 from the war, which he went right through from the beginning to the end, and he had a military medal. And um, then we, because he, he was in uniform, weren't he? And he was what, in uniform before he went. What to, was your Dad's name? Philip Browns. Philip, Philip Browns? Mm. And who was he serving with? A Actually, he was a Colstring Garbson all his time. Because he'd been in the Coldstream Guards before uh, he was in the army, he then went as a Coldstream Guardsman, but he was in the police, so he was driving, uh, he was in front line on the motorbike. He was very smart, upright man. Always would be as a a Guardsman. Yes. So what did he do to get his military medal? Well, it was only him and another man in his lot that were saved. And... um, he saved, he, you know, he sort of was fighting f- with them and got this military medal. How and did it feel to have you, 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 your dad was a hero? Did well, you understand what that meant? Not really. I knew he was, a, he was a real man for telling you what to do. He was a, he was a soldier till he died. Really? Yes. He was a loving man. He, he got a lot of love. But he was really very strict. So, so what did you do during the war? I worked mainly ho- mainly housework. Worked up on the airfield up here when they done Swannington Airfield we, <laughs> canteen. Oh, that was a bit of a laugh because that wouldn't have passed anything a day. <laughs> <laughs> Dirt floor. <laughs> I can only remember one bomb and I was working on cultural aerodrome in the tower, the water tower. And I was in the inside at the top of the water tower and I saw this plane come over and it dropped the bomb just about 50 yards near the hangar. I, I was in the safest place in the world there, <laughs> inside a concrete tank. So this is during the Red Cross, this one? Yeah, this is outside the village hall as it was then. Oh, yeah. That's so me good. on there. Right, yeah. They were the prisoners that came home. Four of them from Germany, but we had the other ones come home, but we never had no pictures of them. Mm-hmm. We lived in Norwich, apartment of Grapes Hill, and uh, the air raid, sh- air raid warrants went, and uh, Father carried me to the air raid shelter. When we came out, our house had gone, and we were evacuated to Wendland. That's how I came to be part of the American part of it. 
and that's all part of the United States Army Air, Air Force. Force. Yes. And you've carried on since the Second World War since with that sec- special bond. Yes. Yeah. And that's taken you back to America as and well. And I've taken me back to America many times now. And now I'm made them. Uh, they made me uh, well, director over to America. What have you got here, John? What, what's this one? Well, all this about? one here is uh, after many years. This was a thank you um, for doing what I did, and I was uh, taken to the Pentagon because our newsletter is done there, and uh, they thanked me and awarded me this uh, this G8 uh, medal as a thank you for excellence, uh, looking after the veterans, bringing them back here, for, you know, so they could look round again for their memories. So this is a very special certificate. Yes, it is, yeah, yeah. Um, because um, I'd been with them quite a while, you know, with the Heritage League, and uh, many many of those who were in the Heritage League came over to visit Wendland and everything, but uh, they also asked me would I have, give them the honour of going in my uniform and uh, represent them uh, in um, uh, France at, at Omaha Beach and lay the reef on June the 6th um, uh, when the President uh, Bush was there to lay the reef for, for the rest of the American side. Really? And uh, I, I laid mine the third after the President, yes. That's quite something, John. These ones here, now these look like First World War, aren't that they? Is, that is First World War, that's the Pembroke Yeomanry um, that were based in Corston. I, I don't know when they went to France, but they were here before they went to France. And this was my father's composition book um, from Corston School. Wow. And um, look at that beautiful writing. Soldiers somewhere in France, some of our soldiers did not have a very nice Christmas this year because they were in the trenches fighting, nor did they have any very nice presents. But no doubt their officer tried to make them happy and comfortable as they could. The Zeppelin's last visit. When the Zeppelin's came last Monday, there were six or seven one came over about half past five and went over Hayden. Three Zeppelins came over Causton about seven to half past. The trains did not run because the Zeppelins might follow them. The, some of the Zeppelins went into the Midlands and did a lot of damage. The report was that they dropped 220 bombs. Good I'm heavens. glad they brought one down in the North Sea. 